need more than one example today. I'm more than happy to do them. I have a couple that I made up. Um, so um, I don't know how many you'll need. I don't know. So I'm just kind of going to throw one up here. If it makes sense to you and you feel comfortable doing it on your own, uh, I'll turn you loose so you can work on your assignment. It'll be the assignment we do this Friday. It's four problems. Four. But there's a lot to do. You need a calculator. Like, no joke. You need a calculator. In fact, I need a calculator. I went and bought one last night because I know I need one to make to do this homework assignment. So, um, because of the level of math that's involved that you have to calculate. So, because I didn't have one. I've been using those stupid little blue ones. So, um, all right. Uh, so, let's, let's walk through this first problem. Here it is. Again, we'll go through other ones if you, if need be. Um, so here's what we have. Got it down correctly. Looks like it. Okay. All right. So this is polynomial. It's two x to the third plus eighteen x squared. Sorry, it's a really bad two. Forty uh, x and then a twenty four. Um, the first steps that it'll ask you is to find your potential x intercepts. The potential roots. That's what your book calls them. The roots. Uh, so that's what we have to do. We have to find these rational roots. That's the title of the section. So how do we find the potentials? This is the first step that we do. What do we, what do we discuss yesterday? What do we look at? How do we set it up? What do you think? I'm on the back. Yeah. So the number in the back, the constant, you're going to put the constant in the back on the top and the leading coefficient on the top. And what you do, and I'm abbreviating, you set it up where you factor those numbers apart and you put them on the top. So for instance, that constant in the back, that's the back number, right? I call it the constant. What are all the factors of 24? 12 and 2, 6 and 4. 12 and 2, 6 and 4. 24 and 1. 8 and 3. Okay, is there any others? I think that's pretty much about it. You guys exhausted that entire list. That was pretty quick. Okay, and those are all the factors of 24. Um, and again, if, if you have a really big number, because I know there is some big numbers in the textbook that I saw. I mean, they went up to, you know, 500 or so. Um, just put a few. You, you don't necessarily have to have every single one. You just have to have quite a few that you can pick from. Pick some small numbers, pick some bigger numbers. You know, I would try to stick with the smaller numbers like one, two, three, four. You know, pick some easy numbers you can uh, you can work with because you'll probably find that one of them works right away. Um, what about the uh, the leading coefficient? What's the number out front? Two. Two and one. One. Two and one. Okay, so those are all the factors of two and one, um, or two, I should say. Now, what we have to do is make every possible combination using the back number over the front number every possible combination and you don't need to put repeatings. So I do expect to see this on your paper when you do your homework. I do want to see that you're setting up your rationals and that you're actually listing out all the different combinations of them. So it's going to be 12 over 2, which is what? 6? That's 12 over 2. 2 over 2, well, that's number 1. Uh, 6 over 2, that's number 3. Um, 4 over 2, which is 2. Uh, 24 over 2, which is 12. Um, 1 over 2, that's half. Uh, 8 over 2, which is 4. I don't think I have 4 listed yet. And what, 3 over 2? So far as good, that was taking the top number, putting over the 2, and simplifying the numbers as I went. Did I lose anybody in that process of me doing that? We're good. Okay, now I'll put all the top numbers over the, uh, the, the other number, the 1. So 12 over 1, I already have it listed. 2 over 1, I already have it listed. 6 over 1, I already have it listed. 4 over 1, I already listed. 24 over 1, I don't have that one, so I'll put that one up here. That's a new one I don't have listed yet. Uh, 1 over 1, yeah, I have it. 8 over 1, don't have it listed. So 8 over 1. And then 3 over 1, I already have that one listed. All right, so these are all my possible combinations. Again, in your homework, I expect that this is the first line of work that you're doing. Um, you're going to list off all the possible combinations that you can possibly find. That could take a while. Maybe your numbers are really big. Um, I picked these numbers on purpose so that there's a lot of them. Um, so we have quite a few numbers to pick from. 
Now, this is the part that I'm not joking. You need a calculator. I went and bought one last night. I went and bought a really expensive calculator because I know that I have to do the same homework that you did last night. So, you have to check which ones work. This is the tedious part where you type in your calculator. It's really helpful if you're with a partner, a friend, so that you can double team and like one person plugs in one number, one person plugs in the other number. And what you're doing is you're taking one of these numbers one at a time and you're gonna plug it into the function. Okay, so this is how you're checking. It's called synthetic substitution. Synthetic sub. And you're gonna plug in one number at a time. So let's say I plug in the number one here. The positive one, I'm gonna plug that in. This is what you're typing in your calculator. Plugging that in, and you're gonna see, will it give me zero out of that thing? So I plugged in the number one, right? Will that give me zero? Absolutely not. Why not? They're all plus. They're all plus. So here's a big red flag. If you need to get zero, you probably need to use some negative numbers, probably. So, in fact, I would try negative one, see if that works. So plug in negative ones and everything and see if that works. If that doesn't work and it doesn't give you zero, remember, I'm looking for when you type in your calculator and the calculator will spit out zero. If that doesn't work, try the next number. Try three or negative three. Try two and negative two. Try six and negative six. I would avoid the ones with fractions. I would try the nice, easy numbers. This is where you and a partner can double team and you can figure out a number that works really quickly. Did anyone actually type this in and find one that works? Negative two. Negative two, perfect. Okay, so negative two actually worked. So negative two, negative two, and negative two. So just to prove that point, thank you for doing that. Uh, negative two to the third power is negative eight. You're gonna take that times two, which is negative 16. Uh, negative two squared is four. Take that times 18. And that is gonna be, um, Let's see, 4 plus uh, 3 and 72, and uh, that's negative 80, it's negative 80, and then you have the plus 24. And so uh, it's negative 96 and positive 96, and yeah, you're absolutely right, that does make zero, so good work on that. Okay, again, you'd be typing that in calculator. You don't have to show all that work. I'm just showing you that it does make zero. Does that make sense what you're doing? What that told me, negative 2. That one worked. That was a root. So negative two. So off to the side, this number is going to work. Now, what is the parenthesis that represents negative two? What's the binomial that represents it? X plus two, yeah. That would be the binomial that represents it. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, why do I care about what do you need that for? You need to divide it out. Because I say in the instructions, list off the possible rational roots, use synthetic substitution to find one that works, one which you did, you found two, perfect, negative two, sorry. You found negative two, that worked. And now, you need to divide it out using long division and find your other rational roots. So off to the side, you're going to divide by this. You're dividing by the x plus two. That's the number negative two that we just said was represented. Again, it's always the opposite of that number, so if it's negative, it's positive there. And so I'm gonna divide it out. And this is the part that we're writing in the house. If you're missing any terms, you need to make sure that you fill them in with zeros. It has to have all the terms accounted for. So if there's like, let's say the x is missing, you better put a zero x in there and put it all least to greatest. Okay, does that make sense? We're gonna do off to the side. I give you plenty of space for this, by the way. You have a half a page per problem. There's only four problems that you have to do. So you'll have plenty of space to list them off. You'll have plenty of space to do the long division and then you have plenty of space to write out what all of your roots are off to the side, okay? Okay, does that make sense what you're doing in your homework so far? Okay, let's finish this problem out so you can see it. Again, if we need to do another one, I have one. I, I created a bunch of these, so. Okay, so um, going through this, what do I take times x? That would give me two x to the third power. What do I multiply on that? Say it. 2x squared, okay, I'm gonna multiply by 2x squared, I'm gonna put it right here. So whatever I'm multiplying by, I need to write it on the top. If it's positive or negative, put it up there. So I'm gonna multiply by 2x squared. When I do that, I'm gonna write down my answer right here. So 2x squared times x, well it's 2x cubed, perfect. 2x squared times four, or sorry, 2x squared times two, well that's four x squared. 
Make sense? I'm going to multiply back. Okay. Now, what do we do on long division? You always switch the signs or subtract straight down, however you want to think of it. Uh, I subtract. 2 minus 2 is 0, gone. 18 minus 4. That's 14. And then you bring down the next term, just the next one. Okay. Make sense so far? We have to keep going. We start all the way over. What do I have to multiply on an x to make 14x squared? 14 and x. Okay, I'm going to use a different color here, so we're going to multiply by a 14 and an x. So 14 times, uh, 14 x times that, so that should be right. So 14 x times x is 14 x squared, perfect. 14 x times 2 is 28 x. Okay, and now what do we do? Subtract, subtract straight down, right? We're going we're gonna to switch the signs, subtract straight down. So if I subtract this, makes 0, this makes... Uh, 12x, that's 28 minus 40, so 40 minus 28, that's 12x. And then we'll bring down the 24, perfect. 24, bring this down straight down. And we start all the way over again. Remember, whatever you multiply by, you always have to write that on the top. That's where I'm getting all those terms along the top. So now, we start all the way over. What do we take times x to make 12x? 12. 12. Positive 12, right? So we're going to make a positive 12. So whatever that number I need to make, I better multiply by it. So, um, Multiply by 12, so 12 times x is 12x. 12 times 2 is 24, perfect. And if you switch the signs, yes, we get a remainder of 0. So your number negative 2 is perfect. It worked. It was great. We already knew that because the little synthetic sub already told us it was going to work. It was going to give you 0. So the, the remainder there justified it. It proved it, yes. So what was the thing along the top of my, my, uh, my long division bar? Yeah, 2x squared plus 14x, and I heard it, say it again. The remaining roots. It's the remaining roots. It is called a reduced function. It is the rest of the roots for my problem. You already found one of them. You found the negative 2, right? We did the synthetic sub. We found that negative 2 works. The thing that when we divide the 2 out, the negative 2 out, the thing that's along the top of your, your, uh, your long division bar, that's the rest of them. You don't need to guess them anymore. You don't need to type in more numbers in your calculator and waste a bunch of time. When you find one that works, you divide it off, and this thing should be factorable. 100% it should be factorable. So this is factorable. We can break this up. How do we factor it? What are the rules? Well, plus. I get the 2x squared, 2x and 1x. What about the 12 in the back? 2 and 6. 2 and 6? Not like that. 2 and 6. And I think that does make the 14 in the middle. So, yeah, that sounds good because this will be 2x squared, 12x, 2x, that makes 14x. Is okay, and 12. Yeah. I could have pulled out a 2 earlier if there's a common factor of 2. I didn't need to do that. But um, So, what you do to solve these, you just set each one equal to 0, and that will be your remaining roots. So you set this thing equal to 0, solve it, subtract that over, divide by 2, so this ends up being a negative 1. So there's one of your numbers that would have worked. So negative 1 would have worked. And then um, if I solve this one, this one would represent what? Negative 6. I solve that. Those are your roots that I needed. So these are all three of your roots right there. Because what was your greatest power in this problem? Greatest power was? 3. You probably have 3x in our set. That's just the way it works. Okay, now, I know that's a lot. I'll get out of my way, sir. Do you want to see another one, or do you think you could handle something like that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, if you need more examples, I have plenty more. I have a whole page over there that I created last time. Okay, I'm going to put on my little mask. I'm going to hand out your homework. It is due on Friday. So you're going to want to take some time. You're going to want to group up with somebody that will help you out when you're doing the, all that synthetic sub so you don't have to waste all of your time on your own um, trying to like figure out which number works. Like You only have to find one and then just divide it out. Once you find the number that works, make sure that you make the parentheses that represents it and divide it off. And you know you made the right parentheses if that thing gives you a zero for remainder. No 
problem with you working on your own, but it would just be a big help if we're going to work with somebody else to help you out with that, all that synthetic subbing. Because it does take a while, I know. This is our first assignment on the next quarter, so some people like to pay attention to all that. Yes. Yeah, you'll need one. I have not driven. I went and bought a new calculator last night just for this purpose. Give me two. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought I. I was like, yeah, I had an extra one. Okay, I'll turn that. Yes. Yes. I need your test done by tomorrow for sure. And that homework sounds good. Okay, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. And I can work on that for like five minutes or so. Yeah. Yeah. So you can work on the breakfast while I'm doing my little meeting. Probably did that. I gotta get it. I just haven't had time to do that.